Good morning. Thank you for coming. I'm Claire Lovell, the digital services librarian at uh, South, <laughs> South Central uh, Regional Library Council. Welcome to this webinar brought to us from the network of the National Library of Medicine, Region 7. Um, a couple of things before we begin. Closed captioning is available if you click on the show subtitle under the live transcript button on the taskbar of Zoom. Uh, you can type questions and comments in the chat and throughout the presentation, we will answer them as they arise. Uh, if you would like everyone to see your questions and comments, make sure to select that option in the drop down menu of the chat box. Um, uh, throughout the presentation, I think we have four, maybe five polling questions. So the, the polling feature will be used. The webina webinar today is being recorded and it will be shared with everyone who registered along with information about how to request a certificate of attendance. And now I'd like to introduce Benny Finch. Benny is an education and outreach coordinator for the NNLM in Region 7, and she's joining us today from Hamden, Connecticut. Welcome, Benny. Thanks, Claire. Um, I'm so happy to be here, and I do, um, I, um, as Claire mentioned, I work with the network, and I'll share a little bit about who we are and what we do um, as we go along. Um, but for now, I was hoping... Um, that you could introduce yourself. So if you would be willing to introduce yourself in the chat with your name and your organization, just so I can see who's with us today. And I will acknowledge I'm very bad with chat while I'm presenting, so I may not see most things that come through, but um, if Claire could just point out anything that I'm missing. So here's a little bit about who I am. Um, my pronouns are she, her, um, and uh, as Claire mentioned, I live in Connecticut. Um, I've been with NNLM for about a year. I graduated um, last May from Southern Connecticut State University with my MLIS. And prior to that, I was a social worker for over 20 years. Um, I love libraries, learning, and people. And I'm uh, very invested in equity and accessibility, um, which are areas that I'm still continuing to learn and grow in. Um, for today, um, here's our agenda, and I will share the learning objectives on the next slide, but um, I'd like to introduce who we are, the NNLM, um, some of the services and resources we provide. I'll go through a brief introduction to health reference, and then I'll share strategies to navigate Medline Plus, which is our consumer health resource of the National Library of Medicine. Uh, this presentation should take about 45 minutes. Um, and as Claire mentioned, I have a few poll questions um, and you'll be able to use the chat for questions and comments. Um, yeah, and feel free to stop me as we go along or we can hold things till the end, whichever works best. Uh, so these are our learning objectives for today. Um, I wanna share with you about how Medline Plus works, um, demonstrate some features of Medline Plus and prepare you to be able to find trustworthy health information for your patrons and your community. Um, we'll start here with our first poll question. So have you ever heard of the NNLM? And our choices are one, yes, I'm very familiar, Two, it sounds familiar, and three, never heard of an NLM. Uh -oh. So now <laughs> I accidentally closed out my poll, so I won't be able to see the answers. Claire, what are we getting? <laughs> um, it looks like seven out of 10 people are very familiar. Oh, Two great. out of 10 say it sounds familiar, and one person has never heard of an NLM. Okay, well, hopefully um, I can just give a brief introduction then um, to who we are. Thank you very much for participating. So though you may be familiar with some of these acronyms on this page, um, most people don't know how it all fits together in terms of us. So I did just wanna share that the National Institutes of Health is the nation's leading medical research agency. Many of you might be familiar with specific institutes such as the National Cancer Institute or the National Institute of Mental Health, which are some of the many institutes and centers at NIH. Um, the National Library of Medicine um, is one of those institutes um, and centers at NIH. Um, it's the world's largest biomedical library, which maintains and makes available a vast print collection and produces electronic information resources like Medline Plus and PubMed. 
NNLM is the network of the National Library of Medicine and is an outreach program of NLM. And um, NNLM is made up of seven geographic regions, which many of you probably are aware shifted um, with the new cooperative agreement, which started last year. Um, region seven includes Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New York, Rhode Island, and Vermont. Um, and Region 7 is hosted by a regional medical library, which is the University of Massachusetts Chan Medical School in Worcester, Mass. And here's just a map of the seven regions. And as I mentioned before, we are the outreach and engagement arm for the National Library of Medicine, and we provide free trainings, funding opportunities, and more to a wide variety of member organizations to help support our mission of advancing the progress of medicine and improving the public health. I will highlight a few of our training opportunities that you might be interested in for further information later in the presentation. And you're welcome to check us out at nnlm.gov. So now we'll move to our second poll question. Um, how often do patrons ask for health information? So one, no one has ever asked me or rarely asks for health information. Number two, I'm frequently asked, or three, um, I'm asked reference questions related to health information at least once per week. So, and I'll just mention that, um, as I mentioned, I've only been a librarian for about a year. Um, I have limited direct library experience um, in terms of answering questions with patrons, but I spend a lot of time using our Medline Plus resource. Um, so I search for health information all the time and I use Medline Plus pretty much daily for either personal reasons or for work. Um, I was just in this past week, someone asked me a question about a medical test. So I've um, looked some things up there and a lot of the projects I'm working on I usually start with Medline Plus resources. So, okay, so it's a pretty even, it's about half and half for nobody ever asks questions or I'm frequently asked questions. So um, hopefully we'll have some information that you can use um, today. And um, um, in terms of uh, ways to use Medline Plus, um, even if it's just in your own uh, life. So many of you, it sounds like a lot of you are very familiar with uh, NNLM. So you might be very familiar as well with health reference. Um, and I, I can't obviously cover health reference and ethics in a short period of time, but we do offer some more in-depth courses if you're interested in learning more. Um, and here's just some things we all know, but wanna keep in mind about sharing health information with patrons. So obviously we're librarians and library staff. We're not healthcare providers, so we're not qualified to give health advice or make recommendations. Um, just some guidelines to keep in mind. Uh, if you're reading material to a patron, read it as it's written and don't make interpretations. Uh, we should not share personal stories or anecdotes as those could be taken as advice. Um, and finally, we don't let our own bias affect the sharing of information, and that's basic um, library ethics, so you're all aware of that. Um, and again, uh, these are things that you're probably aware of, but I did want to just review those quickly. And then I did want to talk about the things that we do, um, we can do. So uh, we're always clear that we're not healthcare providers and that information should be reviewed with their healthcare provider. Um, Patrons might be coming to you because they did not feel that they got adequate information from a provider. So we'll also talk about ways to support patrons to bring information back to their health provider um, to have their questions answered and how to make the best use of medical appointments. So I'll share a resource about that. Um, we maintain trusted resources in our collections and show patrons where to locate them. So we have three courses on demand that are great if you're interested in learning more about consumer health information resources and health reference. And there's also a specialization that we offer or that MLA offers, and we're happy to help pay the, the, um, the fee for that. If anyone's interested, I'd love to talk to you about that. Um, 
and I will have a resource page that I'll be sharing with Claire. Um, on the resource list, you'll find a link to the Consumer Health Collection Development Moodle course um, that we offer. That course goes over evaluation of health information online, but also collection management policies and way to use data to support health programming and manage your collection. We also have other online classes throughout the year, and we have live webinars on these topics, as well as sort of hot topics of interest to support health reference and public health. And we have a number of recordings on our YouTube channel. And now I'll move on to why you're really here today. So uh, why Medline Plus? So Medline Plus is the premier consumer health resource for the National Library of Medicine. It's available anytime, anywhere for free um, with an internet connection. Um, this information can be accessed from a phone, tablet, or computer. Content is designed using web accessibility best practices and is compatible with assistive technology like screen readers. Medline Plus is free of advertisements. Um, it has 40,000 links to authoritative health information in English and about 18,000 links to information in Spanish. Um, and while there are links to resources outside of the NIH, the information has been vetted by the National Library of Medicine. Another important feature of Medline Plus is that it uses plain language as referenced in plainlanguage.gov and shares content in everyday language. Um, the pages are written at a sixth to eighth grade reading level or below. There are also links to documents labeled as easy to read, and these are written at a third to fifth grade reading level. Um, in a second, I'll show you that Medline Plus is available in English and Spanish, but in addition, there's health information available in over 45 languages. Um, information is sourced from over 1,600 organizations, and Again, the resources included on Medline Plus must meet several rigorous quality guidelines. Um, content is added and updated continuously, and uh, links are added daily. Um, I'm including another link in the handout as well that will go over. It's a two-minute video um, that's an introduction to Medline Plus, and it'll go over this information if you need a refresher or to teach others about the value of Medline Plus. Um, I'll also, we'll work, I'm going to do a live demonstration in just a minute, but I thought it would be easier to share a few screenshots just to point out a few things to start. Um, and a lot of the things that I'm going to go over are, may seem fairly basic, but I have learned several tools that can help make navigating easier. And I like to show different ways to find information. Um, so I'll share some of the navigation pathways and features of Medline Plus. Um, I do anticipate some updates. Um, to the platform. Uh, so if you have ideas or comments for making the resource better or things that you feel like are missing, now's the time to, to share that. And we love hearing your feedback and we're happy to share that back to the Medline Plus team at the National Library of Medicine. So please do reach out with suggestions or questions or um, thoughts on how to make it a better resource. Um, during the demonstration, if you have a smartphone or another screen and can follow along and do some searching, I think that it'll help you feel more comfortable using the site um, if you haven't used it already and will be more fun than watching me scroll through things. <laughs> so, um, on this page, you'll notice that the Medline Plus home screen has multiple ways to navigate to information, um, starting with the search box. So I have a box around that here. Um, you can type a query into the search box. Um, you can use the Health Topics button located here at the top left of the banner options. And also, you can navigate along the side from the Health Topics button. Um, both of those options, these two from the banner and from the column, are going to take you to the same place, um, which we'll look look at live in just a minute. And I do want to point out that depending on the device you're using, the banner and the left column are probably going to look different. Um, when my screen size is smaller, this information may only be displayed once, um, but the components are all there. I also, again, want to mention that the site is available in both English and Spanish, so near the top right. I've marked with a box and an arrow that you can toggle between Spanish and English versions. Not every page has um, a version in Spanish, but for those pages which do have a Spanish version available, this toggle button will become visible on that page. 
And again, in the top right corner, I've indicated where you would click back to English if you switch between the two sites. Um, and on this slide, I've placed a box around the About Medline Plus button. Um, I've shared some of the highlights, such as links to articles sourced from 1600 organizations. Um, but I want to mention that Medline Plus offers information on health topics, human genetics, medical tests, medications, dietary supplements, um, and healthy recipes. There are over a thousand health topic pages and descriptions of 150 medical tests. And Medline Plus Genetics offers information on more than 1,300 genetic conditions and 2,800 pages about genes, genetic conditions, or chromosomes associated with genetic conditions. Um, this About Medline Plus page can be printed as a PDF um, by navigating from that button. And that can be helpful if you're sharing with patrons about what Medline Plus offers. And now um, you can follow along our, on your computer or smartphone if you like, or you can just watch my screen with me. Um, there will be a few occasions when I ask you to do a specific search to see what you find. Um, and for now, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And I'll just need a second to switch out. Okay, so hopefully you'll, you're seeing my browser. I'm gonna take us to the Medline Plus homepage. Actually, Claire, are there any questions or anything that I should address before I move on? I haven't seen anything yet, no. Okay, great, thanks. Um, so again, many of you are probably familiar with Medline Plus. Actually, I'm gonna do one more thing. Um, Many of you are probably familiar with Medline Plus, but I wanted to share a few tips as you search for computer um, consumer health information for patrons. Um, I want to I want you to consider how you might teach patrons to use this resource. Um, as I mentioned before, at the top right, you can toggle between English and Spanish. Um, an easy way to go back and forth. Um, I do just want to mention. This icon, Medline Plus, if you ever can find this icon, it will always bring you back to this home page. So I um, just want to share that. Um, also, you can see that there's a search box. And honestly, this is where I would probably start with a search for most things, but I want to show you some other navigation pathways first. Um, this is the About Medline Plus um, box that I had mentioned earlier. Um, next, so COVID obviously is still an important topic. So there's quite a bit of information here related to COVID, but um, this is the primary um, elements that you would look for with Medline Plus. So there's health topics, um, drugs and supplements, genetics, medical tests, and videos and tools. And I did want to mention that for drugs and supplements, there's information on over a thousand medications and 175 supplements. So you can choose any of these. Again, there's a little bit of a duplication, but you can also search here for um, in this left column for health topics, for drugs and supplements, genetics and medical tests. And also that you'll find here a medical encyclopedia and healthy recipes. And all of these are resources that I think are quite useful. Um, in the center of the page, there's a link to our social media or not ours, Medline Plus, the social media account, and then um, some other Medline Plus publications. So you can sign up for the Medline Plus newsletter. Um, you can check out the latest um, Medline Plus magazine. There's information about the All of Us Research Program. And there's a direct link here to clinicaltrials.gov if that's a tool that you're also interested in using. Um, Across the bottom, you'll see that you can start by searching for information such as easy to read health information. And again, that's information that's gonna be a, at the third to fifth grade reading level. Um, there's also organizations and directories, and that is gonna help with locating specialists, medical providers, support groups, and other organizations that are interested in particular topics. Um, you 
You may also notice here that there's a link to health information in multiple languages, and I'm going to come back to that and spend some time there. Um, but I wanted to just share at the bottom, there's other ways to hear about what's going on with Medline Plus, and there's also information about policies, as well as how you would get in touch with um, the National Library of Medicine if you wanted to be able to do that. Um, so I'm going to open up health information in multiple languages. So from this list, um, if there's a language that you would specifically like to find information for, you can choose the language and see what information is available. Um, I'm curious, is there a language other than Spanish or English that you might search for? And if you want to drop that in the chat, um, we could start there. So Claire, if you see anything, let me know. I believe that SDLRC covers 14 counties, so I imagine there could be variation. Did we get a recommendation, Claire? Yes, uh, Andrea pointed out that um, German for Amish patrons. Okay, let's and check that out. Michael said Haitian Creole. Well, they're beside, but let's try, we'll take a look just quickly. So for German, um, let's see, there are a few articles available here that are specifically in German. Um, from this page, you can see exactly where the information is coming from. So in this case, it's Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. For this, um, I guess all of these are, oh, there's some information from the USDA. Um, and in these, for these documents, you'll notice that they're two separate PDFs, so one in English and one in German. Um, we do recommend that if you were um, actually if you were going to share information, that you would share both, print it in both languages, so that people would have the option of bringing it back to their doctor, and their doctor could see exactly what information they're getting. I'm gonna go back, and we'll just take a look at Haitian Creole and see. There's actually quite a bit more here um, in Haitian Creole, and you'll see that there's some things from American Cancer Society, also Centers for Disease Control. And I'll just open this so we can, actually, I'd like to find a bilingual document, which is not here. Okay, I'll go to another example and we'll take a look at some that are together. Okay, so I know French has a ton of, so in, uh, there are so many topics available in French. And so again, we're constantly building and trying to make better resources. So as, um, yeah, so let us know what languages you need and I can certainly pass that along too. Um, but for this document, I'll just share um, on bronchitis. This is what you would typically find in a specifically bilingual document from health information translations. So it has the English side by side with the French. There's um, a diagram which is labeled in both languages. And I do want to point out that each of these documents should show when they were last updated, which is very important because as you know, medical information um, changes quickly. And so you want to make sure that things are up to date. So this is February 14th, 2021. And Medline Plus should be paying attention to that and keep making sure. But just as you're thinking about finding information online, um, that's always something to keep in the back of your mind. Okay. So alternatively, let me just make my way back to the homepage. If you had a specific topic that you were um, interested in and wanted to find out what languages are available, you could search by health topic. So I'm going to choose um, arthritis. And we can just see, so for arthritis, there's um, information in like 10 different languages. So that's going to be listed right at the top. Like, am I going to be able to find anything in the language I'm looking for? Yes or no. And then um, you can find out what exactly is available. And again, I do want to point out that it will always show you where that information is coming from and what to expect. If it's a bilingual PDF, excuse me, or if it's um, more than one article that you need to print in both English and Spanish. 
Um, okay, so I'm going to pretend, once I find my page, that I don't know anything about arthritis, but I'm interested in arthritis. So I'm going to start um, by looking at the medical encyclopedia, see what's there. So the medical encyclopedia, you can search alphabetically. So I'll choose A. I happen to know this is way down the page, so I'm going to go pardon the scroll. Sorry. It really is here. Okay. So here you're going to get a very um, basic definition, um, causes. There's a diagram here. Um, some images, and I do just want to point out that this information comes from Adam, which is a health content provider. Um, it is licensed material, but you're free to print that. Um, you just, if you're reciting them, you'd want to make sure you um, obviously give credit. But um, a lot of the health topic pages, things that are written by the National Library of Medicine are free to use, and you can basically cut and paste those things into your own documents. So just um, in case you're interested in like sharing information, that's an easy way to do that um, from the health topics pages. Um, so here there's a lot of different types of information about treatment, when to contact a medical professional, prevention, there are images. And I just wanted to point out that there's also references for where this information came from, when this page was last reviewed, which is October 25th of 2021, and who did that reviewing. So this was reviewed by an MD who is um, specializes in rheumatology and internal medicine, and it's also uh, reviewed by other folks. So you can see right here um, how recent things are. And I do want to go back to the top of the page, and we see that Arthritis is inflammation or degeneration of one or more joints, and a joint is an area where two bones meet. So taking that information, we can go back to our home page, and we'll start with um, searching by um, health topic. So again, for health topics, you can, um, you can choose alphabetically, um, you can list all topics and browse, but there's there are also um, some basic information, like or highly used information available here that you can link to directly. So they're um, separated by body location and systems, disorders and conditions, diagnosis and therapy, demographic groups, or health and wellness. Um, or you can obviously search alphabetically, or you can just put a search in the search box. So we now know that it's related to joints. So I'm going to choose this page. And when we start, we see that there's a diagram here at the top of the page. And then there's a list of different health topic pages that you might choose. And I'm going to choose specifically arthritis. And this is a typical health topic page, and you can see the pathway is listed here. So here's your home screen, here's your health topics, and this one is specifically on arthritis. Um, so on the health topic page, um, this, there's going to start with this overview screen or this guide, and this will share what information you can expect to find here. And you can jump specifically to that if you find it, if you know exactly what you're looking for. Um, but there's basics, learn more, see, play, and learn, research, resources, and for you. Um, and it, they're, they will typically start with a summary here, which is basic information about the topic. I do want to point out that along the side, you also have a link to medical encyclopedias, the medical encyclopedia. So if you need more information or if you come across a, top, a type, sorry, if you come across a term you're not familiar with, um, you might be able to find that here in the medical encyclopedia and quickly go there to get more information. Um, there's also related health topics and um, which National Institute of Health is primarily researching this area. And again, other languages. So you can find right here um, links to health information in languages other than English. 
So the one thing that you'll probably notice on this page is there are a lot of links to other documents. And again, these are things that have been vetted by the National Library of Medicine. And I just kind of want to point out a couple things about the links. Again, you'll always see where that information is coming from. Um, when I'm looking for information, I'm often looking for information in both English and Spanish, so I can see very quickly what to expect to find, um, what resources are going to be available in both English and Spanish. Anytime you see this NIH icon, that's going to that's information that's coming from one of the National Institutes of Health. If you see this little camera that will indicate that this is a video. So this would be a video available in both English and Spanish. And the other thing I wanted to point out is this easy to read. So this is specifically labeled easy to read. Um, and honestly, when I'm looking for health information, it often helps to have um, very basic information to start. Um, so that if it's appropriate and depending on the question, this might be a good place to start is if you can find an easy to read document. I'm gonna go back up to the top and just kind of go through these sections. Um, so start here holds the most relevant external content and it's selected again by quality guidelines and it's regularly reviewed for currency, relevancy and authority by Medline Plus librarians. Um, next, there's information about diagnosis and tests, treatments and therapies, and this is typical of what you would find on most health topic pages. Uh, living with related issues, there's specific information here, um, genetics information, statistics and research. There's a link here to clinicaltrials.gov, and that will already be populated to look for um, clinical trials related to arthritis. Uh, I did want to mention journal articles. So I don't know how detailed of a search you might do with a patron, um, but um, some of you have probably worked with PubMed before. And PubMed is another NLM database that offers citations for research. It's typically best searched using medical subject headings called MeSH terms, which is a controlled vocabulary. And in my experience, unless you use PubMed all the time, it can be confusing. But let's say your patron already knows a lot about arthritis and wants to see more or look at what research is happening related to arthritis. So I can go here to the journal articles and I can see if these are articles that I'm interested in. Um, but also you can choose this see more articles. And if we choose that, it brings us over to the PubMed um, website. And as you can see, the search terms are already populated for you. So you don't have to determine what search terms to use. They're already there for you. And it is going to take you to a search that's already been created. And so you can see what the articles are that are um, covering recent um, studies on the topic. I'll go back. Um, Reference Desk is going to have things like encyclopedias or glossaries. Uh, find an expert. So this is related to that tab I shared with you on the home screen, which had um, organizations and directories. So it's finding an expert in the field. Here's some things specifically related to older adults, patient handouts. Um, okay. So I'm now going to do what I would typically start with, which is to um, just start with a search. So going up to the search box and I'll choose arthritis. So this page looks totally different. Um, and this is gonna show all of the articles in Medline Plus that are related to arthritis. So as you, um, uh, at the top of the page, there's this uh, card. To, I, I describe it as a note card. It looks to me like a little note card and it has a tab on it. When you see this, this is going to indicate that this is a health topic page. And we already spent a lot of time looking at the arthritis uh, health topic page, but this is going to take us right back there. You can either uh, click on the tab or down here for read more and that's, it will bring you back there. But as you can see, as of today, there are uh, 1,716 links to information about arthritis. You can filter this information over here on the left um, using by health topic, medical encyclopedia, or other choices here. 
So I just want to point that out. Um, and also I pay close attention to this link. So, because it will give me an idea of where I'm going to go. Am I going to a health topic page? Um, these all appear to be health topics. Is it uh, going to take me to the genetics page? Will I be going to the medical encyclopedia? Just so I have a sense of what I'm looking for. Um, so for the first exercise, if you are willing, <laughs> if you could type into a search box, healthy sleep, and we'll see if we can figure out how much sleep a newborn needs. If you're able to do that, that's great. And I'll go ahead and do it on my screen too. So we can just take a look. So some of you may be working, so I don't want to interrupt you, but I will just share. Um, when we uh, do the search for healthy sleep, we do find that there is a health topic page on healthy sleep. So I will open that. And then scroll down. And obviously I've done the search before, but in the summary, we find that newborns need 16 to 18 hours a day. So if anyone had any problems or questions doing that, please do let me know in the chat and we can review things as we go along. But I have one more possible search for you to, to do. Um, hepatitis C. If you could do a search for hepatitis C, however you want to do that, either through the health topics and looking it up alphabetically or in the um, search box. And if you can find your way to the health topic page on hepatitis C, and I would like you to look in the medical encyclopedia and choose liver biopsy. And then once you get there, I'd like to know if the author of that article is Adam, Medline Plus Librarians, or the National Library of Medicine. And I will do the same thing. So. Go, hepatitis C, go. And here I found my health topic page. And we'll scroll down to the medical encyclopedia and I'm gonna check liver biopsy. And that information is provided by Adam. So thank you for playing along. I do actually, I will look at one other thing while we're here. So again, you can always check um, the references. Um, you can check the dates of those references and see how up to date the references are. And you can see that this article was reviewed January 14th of 2021 and who did that reviewing. So that information is all there. Okay, so I would like to launch poll question three, Claire. Um, so in the search box, um, I'd like you to type the word allergy. And in the results, you should see an entry at the top of the page that looks like a note card again. And if you open that health topic page, allergy, I would like you to see if you can figure out where to find the pet allergy quiz. And I understand some people might not be in a place where you can actually do the searching. So, oh, great, someone, let's see. So, yes, 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 great. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. So yes, it's under the health check tools. Well done, thanks everyone. So there are a couple of things I do want to point out before I move on from the health topics section. Uh, so if we go back to this health topics. Penny, are you going to um, review how we got to? Oh, uh, sure. Sorry. Yes. So we'll do allergy. And if we scroll through, 
sorry. Um, yes, so we chose the allergy health topic page. And if we scroll down, I know what I'm looking for. So um, that is here with the health check tools to get to the pet allergy quiz. So Claire, you can't see my screen when there's a poll question, is that right? I can, yes, sorry. Okay. The okay. poll question I, block part of it. <laughs> oh, gotcha, okay, I'm sorry. Yes, I just, thank you. Okay, so does that make sense? How we got there, I can do yes, that one. Yes, thank more. you very much. Okay, great, thanks. Um, okay, so if we go to health topics, I just wanna point out this other thing. So under health and wellness, one thing that is complicated in the U.S. is our health system. So um, there are a lot of articles here about the health system and accessing care. There's information about insurance. And I also want to point out an article that relates to what I mentioned early about um, being an active partner and talking with your doctor. So I think this is a really helpful resource. Um, this health topic page has just in the summary has some basic advice um, for patients when they're seeing a medical provider, which is to make a list of your concerns, any allergies. And this I think is very important, listing all of the medicines, herbs, or vitamins you take and putting all of that um, down before you go to the doctor's appointment. Um, writing down a description of symptoms, when they started, what makes them feel better, worse. Um, and another one that's very important, which COVID has really impacted, is being able to bring a trusted friend or family member um, for appointments. Um, I know that can be extremely helpful to, to know, to be both here the same thing. And there's also in this medical encyclopedia, making the most of your doctor visit, shared decision making, and when you feel like changing your medicine, some, um, uh, an article there. Also, there's a resource here called questions to ask the doctor. Do you know the right questions to ask? There's a short video here about talking to your doctor, and that's available in English and Spanish. There are a number of other resources here. And I also wanted to point out in health check tools, there's a question builder. Um, be prepared for your next medical appointment. I'm a little leery of apps because I because I'm me and I worry about like what they're tracking and who knows what. But it is a nice um tool just to look at to see what questions you might want to ask um, in a doctor's appointment. Okay. And the other thing I wanted to mention is as we've been talking about all the resources, I've been pointing a lot out a lot of things about evaluating health information, but I did want to point out that there is a health topic page on evaluating health information as well. So I just I'm going to choose this card because I know it's going to bring me to the health topic page. And again, there's a summary and there's also information about evaluating health information on the internet. It gives a lot of good questions here to consider. And it also links out to some uh, other resources here as well. Okay. And now I would like to just briefly go over um, I think this is important to share. So I am going to go over the drugs uh, and supplements page. Um, patrons might be looking for information about over-the-counter or prescription medications and supplements. And that information is available here um, to learn more about interactions, warnings, and side effects. There are more than a thousand records on over-the-counter and prescription medications and over 175 herbs and supplements. So here you can um, browse alphabetically and then for um, herbs and supplements, you can do that as well. Sorry about that. Um, the, so this is what the herbs and supplements page would look like. And you can again browse by um, alphabetically. So going back to this, I would like to just share with you um, a couple of, I'm just gonna give I'm going to show acetaminophen because that's a common medication. Um, so on a typical drug page, you're going to see um, how it's pronounced. You're going to see this list of questions in the box. And this is going to 
give you a guide like the other topic page about what you're going to find in this article. Anytime you see a red box, it means there's a warning about this medication. So you want to pay careful attention to this and you would want to read about um, safety concerns with medications. Um, but again, these are the answers to why is this medication prescribed? How would this medicine be used? Other uses, precautions, um, and dietary instructions, side effects. And then the other thing I want to point out is it also goes over brand names. So these are some brand names for acetaminophen as well as combination products. So these are other medications that also contain acetaminophen and other names for it. And again, you can see that this page was last revised on January 15th of 2022. And this information is managed by the American Society of Health System Pharmacists. Um, so that is helpful to know. And I also just want to show you what the um, information on supplements is going to look quite a bit different. And these, I'll just choose aloe vera. So this is an article from the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health. And this is going to share some background about aloe vera. How much do we know? What have we learned? What do we know about safety? and then some other links for more information. Um, all the information about prescription and over-the-counter medications is licensed material from the American Society of Health System Pharmacists. And most of the information on supplements is from the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health and Natural Medicine's Comprehensive Database Consumer Version. Um, again, you are free to print any of this information. And could we launch our fourth and final poll? I know we didn't spend a lot of time on how to search for, um, for um, medications, but I do want to take a chance to look. So loratadine is used to temporarily relieve the symptoms of hay fever and other allergies. So which of the following brands contain loratadine? So I'm going to go over here. And we'll look up loratadine. Okay, where are you? Actually, I'm going to show this a different way. Um, and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just typing loratadine in the search box. And again, it's going to give me all of these links, but there's not, for this, as you can see, there's not a health topic page. But I do want to look down at these links, as I mentioned, and this one is going to be about drugs and supplements. So this is the one I want to choose. Loratadine. And this was kind of a trick question. So some of you have figured that out. Um, so we'll scroll down to the medications. And yes, so there are a number of brand names, and I don't know if you can see this, but um, Alivert and Claritin are both correct. Um, and what are my other options? Zyrtec is not here and Allegra is not here, um, but you could also choose both A and B because that's gonna, that includes Alivert and Claritin. So nicely done. Thank you, everyone. Um, so I can either stop and take questions or I can briefly go over the genetics page and the um, medical test page. I don't know how to make that. I don't decision. see any questions coming up yet. Okay, so I'll do that. Uh, so genetics. Um, so this was previously in a resource called Genetics Home Reference. It's consumer-friendly genetic information. There are about 2,800 pages about genetics, genetic conditions, or chromosomes associated with genetic conditions. You can, again, use the search box, or you can um, search alphabetically for specific genetic conditions. Um, I'm gonna search for Down syndrome. And again, I wanna point out, so there is a health topic page on Down syndrome, but I'm specifically interested in the genetics. So I'm gonna come down here and see what is available related to genetics. Um, and so it's very tiny here, but um, I realize that this page is gonna take me there. So I'm gonna choose 
this, and this would be a typical page you would find. So there's um, a very in-depth overview, and then if you scroll down, you can learn more about frequency, causes, um, inheritance probability, other names for this condition, and additional information resources and references. So that's what you would expect to find here. And lastly, this is something I use quite a bit, which is medical tests, just to learn about various medical tests. And for this, I'm gonna choose allergy skin test just as a page to share. So this talks about what is an allergy skin test? What is it used for? Uh, why do I need an allergy skin test? What happens? So I can be prepared to know what's, what to expect. Do I need to prepare for the tests? Are there any risks? Um, what do the results mean? And is there anything else I should know? And I do want to point out that you can also go to the references and see how this information was developed. Um, actually, there's one more thing I want to check. And it does share here at the very bottom of the page that this information was last updated September of 2021. And... I think the last thing is this videos and tools. Um, so you can search here for videos, specific health videos, Medline Plus videos, health check tools. And there's also a couple of tutorials available here. One is understanding medical words and another on evaluating health information. Um, the videos, I don't think I said this, are closed captioned and also have video descriptions. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for your time and for, um, I appreciate you joining me today. And I hope that if you have questions, you would definitely reach out in the future. Um, I also want to point out that if, if you want a refresher on this information, you can also take the Medline Plus for Libraries and Health Educators tutorial. It's a one hour course that you can do on demand and it will go over most of the information that we went over today. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing. And I'll turn my camera back on in case anyone has any questions or. Hey Betty, I just want to mention something. Um, South Central and all of its member libraries have access to OCLC's first search. Okay. And usually we use first search to get to WorldCat, but it's actually an umbrella of databases. And in that listing is Medline. And I think it's important to note that that version of Medline is not what we've done today. It is not Medline Plus. It is um, basically PubMed. Okay, thank so you. So after today, if anybody is scrolling through that list and they think that that is, sorry, that they think that is Medline Plus, this rich resource that we've talked about today, it just isn't. It's PubMed, um, which is what maybe your specialist physicians would be using and, and for the physicians and healthcare practitioners. Thank you so much for your presentation today. It's my hey. pleasure. I love talking about Medline Plus because I think it's a fantastic resource. But yeah, if and also I'm happy just to other organizations out there if, you know, if you would like me to come to a staff meeting for 20 minutes and talk about this. I'm always happy to set up times to do that. So please do reach out. That's what we're here for. I shouldn't speak out of turn, but um, I think that when I was at a public library, you guys might have sent us promotional material for free. Is that still a thing? Yes, you can print your own or you can order it and it will come from our office. Um, we have, yes. And it's possible that you might have some of our printed brochures already. Um, at LCLRC, I'm not sure. But um, yes, you're welcome to request material. And we'd be happy to send that out, especially there's a capability brochure, but it's really a nice introduction to Medline Plus for patrons. And it's available in English and Spanish. Thanks so much, Benny. This is just such a fantastic resource that is freely available to everyone. And thanks for walking us through it today. My pleasure. Thank you for coming.